Hello, Penny. Yes. Hey, it's uh, Roy from the Homeowners Association. And uh, I'm calling to let you know we're going to be coming by tomorrow to paint your roof. Excuse me? We're going to be painting your I'm... roof tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we're going to paint your roof. No, you've, you've got the wrong number. Oh, wait, this isn't Penny? This is Penny, but not the right Penny. Well, on Creek Drive? Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, it's it, you don't have to worry about it. We're paying for it and everything. We're just going to be painting your roof with ultraviolet paint. What? We're going to be paint, Wait a minute. painting your roof. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. You Talk to my husband. What for? How come you can't deal with it? Wait a second. Why? Huh? There's some guy on the phone saying he's coming here tomorrow to paint our roof with ultraviolet paint. No. No. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not asking permission, ma'am. Yes, you are, because we own this house. No, yeah, but the we're... The Homeowners Association does not own this house. Yeah, but we get to tell you what to do with it, so we're, we're going to have you no, paint... No, you don't. We're going to paint... No, you don't. Yes, we do. You don't know how things work around here. We're going to... Uh, excuse we're just... me, we've lived here for 10 years. My husband was on the board. We know how things but, work But he's, he's not on the board anymore, and we're going to be painting your house with ultraviolet paint... No, you're first not. ...first thing in the morning. Well, the police will be here to greet you if you try and do well, something. No, like ma'am, that. listen, we own the police. We can do whatever we want. Yeah. Paul, will you jump on? This guy's crazy. We're the Homeowners Association, ma'am. You are not the Homeowners Association. What do you mean we're not? You I... are some idiot who thinks he's going to fool me into doing something stupid, and you're not. And if you call here again, we will get the police in. No, we're not trying to get you to do anything. We're just going to come and paint the roof. That's no, all. you're not. You're not stepping on our property. But it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. The Homeowners I Association, don't care. they paid for it. The Homeowners Association does not do these things. Yes, we do. You it's, are it's absolutely a new crazy. Look, you, you just don't understand how the modern world works. You know, it's 2000. Thank you very much. Penny, please hang up. Penny, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him, Penny. Don't hang up. Penny? No. Nope. Are you hung up? Penny? Penny, stay no, there. I'm up. Thank you very nope. much. No, she's still there. What the fuck is this? R-E-E-F-E-R. We be touching tones, calling phones. We rip from Craigslist. Systematic prank machine has never been better than this. Feeling fine, dial your line. You don't know what the facts is. Running strong for 20 years. Cactus? Cactus. This ain't a game, playing on these phones Roy gets a little boner every time he hears the dial tone Just like when I see there's a brand new upload We eat, sleep and listen to the Snowplow Show My name is Sensei Doug, I happen to know Tai Chi See you giving snake eyes and we're gonna have a disagreement Call you morning, night or evening If we hack your voicemail, we call it an achievement If you laugh Try your best to conceal it When the number's disconnected We know it's a bereavement this Shit Please hang up and give a moment of silence Message PLA PLA Hello everybody You are listening to the Snowplow Show For July 23rd, 2018 This is episode 484 And as usual I don't have my sponsor names here Since I'm farming out those responsibilities to random businesses around the country. Here, let me make a quick phone call. I swear it's faster to do it this way. This took much longer before when I didn't use random stores all over the country. Welcome this is Samantha speaking. How may I help you? Hey, Samantha. It's Brad from the Snowplow Show. Yes, sir. Is this the manager? I'm, I'm the assistant manager. Oh, okay. I just need the sponsor names for today's Snowplow Show. They should be on a piece of paper there somewhere. The Snowplow Show sponsors are King Richard, Brown Magic, Taraz Kuras, Gobi, and David J. Yep. Uh, thank you very much for the help. You're welcome. Have a good day. Cactus. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Oh, I just got hung up on for that. Whatever. But there you go. Today's sponsors for the show are King Richard, Brown Magic, Kuraz, Gobi, and Derek J. Thanks, you guys, for supporting the Snowplow Show. If you'd like to help support the Snowplow Show, I would really appreciate it. Thanks to the Snowplow Show, I have something like $25,000 in restitution debt and lawyer debt. 
I've almost got the lawyer paid off, but I've barely made a dent in the restitution. Paid off a little over a thousand so far. And your support really helps out with all of that. I really appreciate that, you guys. You guys have been awesome about supporting the show throughout this entire ordeal that the Snowplow Show got me into. And I'm doing the show full time now, thanks to you guys, thanks to your support. So thanks for making that happen. I can't really brag about doing a lot of shows because last week I only did one normal size show. I'm such a slacker, but I'll do my best to make up for it this week. But you do get access to the Hobo Soda Archive when you support the show. That's 120 shows now, secret shows that you've never heard before. Just full of crazy material. Looks like the last one I did was on Friday and it was titled, You Hang Up Your Piece of Phone First. And let's see, oh wait, no, no, I don't have to play a, a small clip of that show because that one was free. Every 10th Hobo Sode, I just give it out for free. And that was Hobo Sode number 120. So you guys get to hear that one completely for free. I will have a link to that in the show notes. And I also did a Hobo Sode on the 17th, which was Tuesday, Chocolate Cake for Dogs. I think I mentioned that in the last show, so I don't need to find a clip of that one either. So let's just move on. But if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash phone losers. I've got a few announcements here before we get started. Announcement number one, yesterday was Sunday, so you know what that means. There's a brand new Calls of Mass Confusion. Oh, wait a minute. Never. Hold on. Never mind. Cross that out. Uh, Announcement number two. I did a show on Saturday with Roger and Mr. Biggs from the Stick It with Mr. Biggs podcast. Stick It. That was a lot of fun. I love those guys. I've been listening to them since 2009, I think we determined on the show. Almost 10 years now. And you can listen to that on the Phone Losers feed at phonelosers.com. It's also on the Patreon feed, and it will be on the YouTube shortly, uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow. I've still got to finish editing up the video for that one because that is a video show. You get to see full video of me and Roger and Mr. Biggs. A lot of people said the magic was ruined for them after seeing Roger and Mr. Biggs in real life. People have said that to me a lot, too, over the years. I ruined the magic by putting myself up there on video. Sorry, everyone. Now I'm ruining the magic of other podcasters, but please go listen to that. Phonelosers.com. We just hung out for like uh, an hour and a half and took your calls, dealt with a bunch of trolling, people just calling in and saying cactus a bunch. I don't know why you guys have to do that. It's a bunch of bullshit, really. And next week, we're going to have Jack Heliquin on the show. That should be interesting. If you don't know who Jack Heliquin is, you should definitely go watch his videos over on Facebook or YouTube. I'll put links to those in the show notes if you're too lazy to just get on YouTube and search for Jack Heliquin. He's going to be on my show on Saturday. I think we decided on 3.30 Pacific, which will be 6.30 Eastern Time on Saturday. We'll be hanging out for about an hour, taking your calls. Who knows what'll happen? It'll probably be crazy. So be watching the PLA Twitter for that on Saturday for the links and everything. I usually broadcast on Facebook and on the Shoutcast. I've got a news story today before we get started. It's about payphones. Because everyone likes news stories about payphones. I know I do. A Friendswood man was ordered to pay back $2.4 million in a payphone scam. Just as coin-operated payphones began nearing the brink of extinction in the early days of the 21st century, David Grudzinski landed on what seemed like an easy way to keep himself solvent. The Friendswood man owned at least 450 payphones in the Houston area and figured he absolutely would turn a profit if it worked. And holy crap, he did. $2.4 million. So this is a really long article. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but there's this weird thing about payphones which I've never fully understood. But if you go up to a payphone and you dial a toll-free number from a payphone, the payphone owner gets money from that call. And I'm skimming through the article to see if it tells me what that amount is. I remember people in the past telling me it was something like 50 cents, but that may have just been an estimate. I don't get it. It's some sort of a federal credit of some sort. So if you see a payphone out there and you want to make money for the owner of that payphone, just dial a toll-free number from the payphone and, and he just made 50 cents or 25 cents or whatever it is. He gets money for that. They send him a check at the end of the month. So this guy from his home office, he set up a system for his multitude of phones. He owned 450 payphones in the Houston area. Oh, there's the amount, 49.4 cents. And that's what people used to tell me back in the 90s, in the early 2000s. So I guess it hasn't changed. And why is that even still a thing today? He signed up for an online service that would collect 49.4 cents in federally mandated payment for each of the roughly 4.8 million calls made from the phones all over the Houston area over a 10-year period. He made $2.4 million. 
And he's got to do 18 months in prison for this in $500 monthly installments. He's 61 years old. I don't know if he's going to make it. The 49 cent thing, it's called a dial around compensation, a federal communications mandate requiring remuneration to pay phone providers for long distance calls, prepaid phone card calls, toll free calls made from a coin operated machine comes from federal and state agencies. I don't know. He, he rigged it up in his office somehow and made it so that his phones were dialing by themselves. They were dialing toll-free numbers. He had them dialing the Internal Revenue Service, the Security and Exchange Commis- Commission, the General Services Administration, the Defense Department. Why would he do that? Why would he make toll-free calls to the Defense Department? He's just asking for it. And I guess the feds were staking out the pay phones to see who was using them and who was making all of these calls. And they're like, that's weird. Nobody's here, but the calls are happening. How could that be? And they finally figured out it was him. I will put a link to this story in the show notes if you want to read more about it. It's a pretty long article. It explains more detail than I'm going to give you here because I don't have all day. I got shit to do. Let's do some calls or something right after I play this brand new song by Henrik called Pull Up Your Socks. But it's not brand new. It's another one that I found in my email last weekend. He sent this to me in January. I've probably played it on a show before. I probably just forgot to delete the email. But here it is. A song by Henrik. Pull up your socks. Pull your socks up. this idea from Miguel in the Facebook group. He says, what about calling up workers and letting them know about the corporate rollout of transparent cloaking for security? It's to assist them with their jobs and the regular workers just need to ignore them, although they will struggle to see where they are, but must not stand in front of them. I think Miguel is saying that everyone's going to be wearing those invisibility cloaks from Harry Potter. That sounds great. Let's give that a try. Family Dollar Stone speaking. How may I help you? Yeah, hi, who's this? Stanley. Oh, hey, hey, Stanley. It's uh, Roy from the corporate office with Family Dollar. Yes. Hey, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we've got uh, security workers in your store today. And um, they're under a, kind of like an invisibility cloak. You can't see them. Okay. And this guy, he's working there. His name's Roger. He says you keep looking at him. I keep looking at him. Yeah, because he's standing right by you. Like, he's just kind of keeping an eye on things, watching for, I don't know, shoplifters and keeping an eye on your sales and everything. But, like, sometimes you'll notice a shadow over there, like just a weird shadow move in the mid- in midair where he's standing. About a candy? Yeah, yeah, and you keep looking at him. Like he says, you're, oh, I keep, uh, well, because I got shot flippers in here, and I've been trying to catch them, and I couldn't, but because I'll be here by myself. Oh yeah, well, no, we've got security in there. He's watching for the shoplifters, but he says he's. Oh, he good. Says, Thank God. Yeah, he says he says like you keep looking at him, and it's really off-putting, and it's breaking his concentration. Oh. Because uh, because I I don't know who he is, so of course I'm gonna. I'm assistant manager here, so of course I'm gonna stare the store down. Oh no no. But now that I know. No, he's he's invisible. Like you can't see him. He he's under. He's using technology that uh, masks his location. Like you can be looking right at him, and you won't even see him. He's just standing in there. He's like right next to you right now. I can see him on the security camera because it's got infrared. Okay. You understand? Yes. So just be careful. Like when you're walking around, if you bump into him. Like, if you bump into something and there's nothing there, that's who that is. It's the security guy. All right. But but he says you keep looking at him. Like, how? Like do you see him, like, moving a little bit? Because sometimes you see shadows. Oh, that didn't work out, Miguel. I don't think this idea is going to work. I'm not sure why. 
Family Dollar, this is Dwan. Can I help you? I'm sorry, who is this? What's that? Oh, what was your name? Dawn. Dawn. Oh, Dawn, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Roy from the corporate office with Family Dollar. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Hi, um, I just needed to let you know. We've got a, a security guy in your store today. Uh, he's, We've got a what? There, there's a security guy in your store today. He's been hanging out there for the for most of the day today. But we've got him oh. masked w under a security uh, invisibility cloak. Like, you can't actually see him. He's just standing in there next to you. Oh, nice. Okay. So, so um, I just wanted to, wanted to let you know, like, you keep bumping into him. Like, have you noticed you keep bumping into him? Yeah, no, I haven't. Okay. But thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I'll he, make sure he moves. He, well, no, don't ask him to move. Just maybe walk around slowly and say, excuse me. Oh, okay. I can do that, too. Because you keep bumping into him, and it's kind of rude, and, and he says it's really getting on his nerves, and you keep looking at him. Even well, tell him to move. Well, no, he's got to be there. He's security. Well, tell him to move to a different spot. Well, he's trying to, but you keep just, like, like you know, cornering him and stuff. Am I hitting him now? Because I'm trying to. No, you're not. He's he's keeping his distance at this point, but you keep looking at okay. him. Like you keep looking at like sometimes you'll, you'll see shadows where he is. Yeah. You know, and it it seems like um you know you it's like you know he's there and you're just trying to mess with him. Like can you stop? I am trying to mess with him, but but I have to go because I'm busy. But you know that since he's telling you that. Yeah, yeah, I I know that. I'm just uh, I'm just asking nicely. Can you please be nice to the guy? Yes, you got it. Okay, you got it. Because you're being kind Bye of a, you're being kind of a jerk. Ah, uh, okay. Let's try one more time. I guess maybe two more times. Oh, that one's busy. We'll try the next one. The dollar store can't afford caller ID. Family Dollar South. What? Hello. Hi. Um, this is Roy from the corporate office. Who's this? Yeah. Just hold on. Let me put my manager on. I'm busy right now. Just one second. You're lazy. No, I see. I'm I'm busy with some customer. Let me give the phone to my manager. Oh, is the manager right there? Yeah, just one second. Jeff. What's your name, ma'am? Ma'am. Jeff. Ma'am. Manager wasn't right there. She no. had to walk across the store. Say what? Oh, what's your name, ma'am? Why does everybody call me a ma'am? I'm a guy. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Is my voice really that bad? Uh, no, I think I just have the pitch uh, raised up on my, my mixer, on my studio mixer. That's all. Uh, on my Carol okay. machine. It's my fault. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Uh, th this is Roy from the corporate office. Is this the manager or the person I was talking to before? I don't know if you're on the cell phone. You're cutting in and out. Oh. Weird. Okay, not getting Oh, you're cutting out really bad. Are, are you are you far away from the, the cordless phone base? Yeah, I am. Yep, that'll okay, do it. Also, okay. Is this the manager or is this still the cashier? Yes, yeah, this is no it's the manager. Oh, okay, great. I'm I'm from the corporate office. This is Roy. Uh huh. And uh we've got a security man in your store today. Uh he's we've got him um set up with uh this technology that renders him pretty much invisible. He's been standing by the cash register. Okay. Um, have you noticed him? Because sometimes you'll see shadows move around when he walks around in the store, even though he's invisible. Um, no, I haven't noticed him. Okay. Um, we've been trying to call him, but he's not answering his cell phone. I guess he turns it off so he's more invisible, you know? Okay. Can you tell him that uh, he needs to call his wife at home? His name is Stanley. Okay. Can, can you tell him that real quick right now? Okay. Who is this? Uh, my name is Roy from the corporate office. Stanley's our security <laughs> man. He's in your store today, but he's invisible. There's a security man in the store, but he's invisible. Yeah, it's technology. Like, it, it bends the light around him or something. I don't understand how it works. I'm not a scientist. Okay. But He's in there and he's invisible. He's he'll be right around the uh, cashier area. Can you can you yell out Stanley? I know where Stanley is. Stanley works at another store. No, no, this is a different guy. This is Stanley, the security guy. Okay. First off, I know who all the security guys are in our in our region. 
No, you're not understanding. I'm from the corporate office. This is a test program we're doing with invisible security guys. And it wouldn't work that well if we told everyone they were in there. Hey, this is Sean, the district manager. How can I help you? Hey, Sean. I guess you know about our uh, security, our invisible security team that's in there? No, haven't heard nothing on it. Oh, yeah. We've, we've deployed it all over the, the city. Uh, there's an invisible man in there right now. His name is Stanley. And we just need okay. you to pass along a message to him, if you could. Okay. Uh, he just needs to call home. Like, call his wife, call her on her cell phone. He needs to what, sorry? He, he needs to call, call home, call his wife. She really needs to talk to him. Okay. Can, can you tell him real quick? I'll, I'll hold. Okay. Right. Hey, Stanley, you need to call home. Your wife's looking for you. Did he respond? Yeah. What, what did he say? He said thank you. Oh, okay, great. Uh, when you hear him on his cell phone, he'll be under his invisibility cloak. You won't be able to see him. Just kind of ignore the sound, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Yep, thanks. Th thanks for being a part of the team. Yep, absolutely. Goodbye. Bye. So that screaming I heard in the background, was that the manager pretending to be Stanley? Saying thank you or whatever? That was weird. I think I may have just gotten out weirded by the, the dollar store people. We're having a great day at the Dollar Tree. It's Jenny. How may I help you? Hey, Jenny. It's Roy from the corporate office. Hi. Hi. Um, I just got this um, message from our security guy, Stanley. He's in the store right now. Um, he says you need to pull up your socks. Pull up my, pull up my what? I'm sorry. Your socks. My socks? Yeah, because, you know, it's a, it's a professional business, and you don't have your socks pulled up all the way, and it just kind of makes the store look like a low-rent type place, like we're a bunch of hobos. Um, I'm kind of confused at what you mean. Like, are you talking about... Hold on one sec, okay? No, no, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. No, hold, hold on no. a sec. I'm trying to help my cashier real quick. Uh, what I'm trying to okay. say here. All right, sure, fine. Okay. Um, so that I know for sure it's corporate office, can I get mm -hmm. the code of the day? Sure, it's Fusion. Okay, hold on one, hold on one sec. Let me switch over to my cordless real quick, okay? Okay, my that'll help. Phone. That'll make it sound better. Okay, I'm going to hang up the phone so it's not echoing. Okay. Good idea. <laughs> okay, I'm going to walk into my office now. Okay, well, we just need you and the cashier out there. You need to tell her, too, like, just to pull up your socks. Pull up our socks? What do you mean by that? Because you, know, you can't even see my socks. I know, but we can tell on the security camera. We can see them ruffled down there, like, through the pants, through the bottom of the pants. Um, we have pants mine filters. Are, uh, you can't pull up mine anymore. Mine are ankle. I know, but, like, that that's... That's not acceptable. And the cashiers, she definitely needs to pull up her socks. Can you go okay, tell her real quick? The the yeah, it's Fusion. Say that one more time. Fusion. Fusion, like F U. Like like on Steven Universe. Uh, okay, so F U S I O N. Don't say F U to me, lady. I'm with the corporate office, and none of this stuff matters. I'm just letting you know. You need to go tell everyone to pull up their socks. Okay, this, well, I can't do that until I get the code of the day. This ain't a store of hobos. You, oh, you, you can too. You have to follow dress code at all times. Okay, I, you can tell me that, but I need to make sure this is a uh, corporate office, so I need the code of the day. Do you really even need to have the corporate office tell you that you need to pull up your socks? I mean, Yes, I need to make sure this is corporate office, so I need the code of the day. We're, we are professionals here, ma'am. This, this entire company, we're supposed to be professional, and you're walking around with your socks not pulled up, and she hung up. And holy shit, a, a code of the day? Really? Why didn't any of the other stores ask for the code of the day? And I seem to be having connection problems or something. Let's go to speedtest.net. Do a quick speed test here, see if something's wrong with my internet. Got an 11 millisecond ping, it claims. My download is 118.92. And my upload is 8, 9, 9, 9, 10. Oh, it's going up. 
11.35. I should be able to make phone calls on that, right? Why are my phone calls all choppy? Maybe I need to go reset my modem. I'm going to go do that real quick because you guys care about this stuff. But I'm running downstairs to reset my modem and my router. Hey there. I'm Mr. Biggs from the Stick It with Mr. Biggs podcast. Stick It. And when I work with glues and adhesives, I like to listen to the Snowplow Show because that's what it says here on the paper. Not familiar. Oh, okay, okay, I'm back. Never heard of this. My internet is reset. Should I do another speed test? Nah, I'm not going to do another speed test. I probably didn't fix anything, but I tried. Whatever. We have a great day, Dollar Tree. This is Rhonda. How may I help you? Hey, Rhonda. It's Roy from the corporate office with Dollar Tree. Yes. Um, I'm just calling to let you know, um, Like, have, has your manager told you about the, uh, the security man in the store who's uh, invisible? No. Okay, yeah, we've got a guy in there. We're doing this at all the local stores, all the Dollar Trees. Okay. There's a man in there, but he's using technology to cloak himself in invisibility, kind of like the Klingon ships in Star Trek. You know? Okay. So he's standing there by the counter, but you can't see him. You might hear him breathing, or you might hear him writing on his notepad. Like okay, he, you're like freaking me out. No, no, I'm I'm not trying to freak you out. I'm just um I'm just saying like he says you keep looking at him a bunch. Like are are you huh? He says that you keep looking at him. Like he's standing there and you just keep looking at him. Um okay. Like do you see him or something? No. Oh, okay. Well, we we were afraid like the technology was failing and he was concerned, so he texted us and said that um th that you kept looking over in his direction like maybe you're just seeing shadows or something when he moves around no okay um also he got this uh we, we've been trying to get a hold of him but now he's not answering um he, he needs to call home to his wife can you can you let him know for us real quick uh yeah and how am i gonna do that uh just kind of yell out his, his name is doug no I am not doing that. Why not? No, he's right there. It's fine. He'll probably respond. No. Please? Like, no, he, like, I, I'm not, I don't think it's a, an emergency with his wife. She just really wants him to call her. Uh, no. What, why won't That's you? That's ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. He's, this, this is like, l look it up on the internet. This is technology that exists. It like bends light around him. You can't see him. No. No. Yes, it does. Like, look on the internet. Like, like you know, we see you on the cameras all day playing on your phone. We know you got internet there. Just look on the internet real quick. And you'll see. Like, in, invisibility. It exists. It's 2018. Uh, no. But anyway, uh, can you please tell Doug to call home? Doug needs to call home. Doug. Doug needs to call home. Can you just repeat that loudly and make sure he hears? Um, where is he standing? Uh, I, well, I can't see him on the security cameras because he's invisible. Just kind of yell out, Doug, please call home. Call your wife. Mm. And at least that way you'll know where he is so you can not look because he'll probably say, okay, thank you. This is like totally freaking me out, hey? Why is it freaking? Have you have you called any of the other stores? What? Yeah. No. No. I mean. I mean. All the store other stores have this the invisible security men. If that's what you mean. No. It's it's just your store where you keep looking at him and it's. It, he says it's very off putting, but we just need you to like let him know to uh, call home. Uh no, I am not doing that. Can you hold up a sign at least? This is. This is like freaking me out. Hey. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? It's it's not. I'm not trying to freak you out. It, it's just basic security stuff. Um, if I would have know, if, if we would have been told, we would have been told that there's people coming into our store underneath a, a security surveillance. Yeah, well, no, it's like an invisibility cloak, so you can't see them. But I mean, if we told you, what would be the point? Because because I mean, like to be honest, he's there to keep an eye on you too, to make sure you're not stealing from the register. So we have a yeah. real problem with that. No, no offense or anything. We don't think you'd really do that. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, he's he's there to watch the whole store, not just the customers. 
Can you please tell him to call home? Tell him to call home to his wife. I think she just wants to tell him about her soaps or something. It's probably not. Uh, what? Like, just ha- please say, Doug, call home. Call your wife. Like, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe his battery ran, ran down or something in his phone because he's not responding to us. Um, hold on. Where are you going? Oh, sorry, the light was on. I think she's walking around the counter and flapping her arms all over the place to try and find Doug. That'd be my guess. That's what I would do. I don't know what's going on. I think she just set down the phone and she's helping customers. She's acting like customers are more important than me. I'm from the damn corporate office. What's this about? Are you there? Yep. Do you have our quote of the day? Uh, yeah, it's um, fusion. Huh? Fusion. We just use a word. We just use a word here at the corporate office. Well, yesterday it was cactus. What? What's today's? Fusion. How do you spell it? I T. Look, can can uh, like we're wondering if maybe he fell asleep because um, we've been told he might have narcolepsy. Can you walk around the counter and like wave your arms all over and try and hit him? Like just try Goodbye. and f- try and find him. Oh, that part made her finally realize it was a prank. Not all that other stuff, just that part. Okay, I think I'm done with this, but Miguel has another idea in the PLA um, Facebook thing. In the same thread, it's like right underneath this idea. I don't know who he thinks he is putting ideas in the Facebook group. What's the chances I'm going to see it there? But he says, Brad, you need to call up a few workers and let them know that they're sitting an exam that's being timed against a robot for corporate innovation. They're sitting an exam. Okay, I think I know what this means. Having a great day at Dollar Tree. This is Robin. How can I help you? Oh, who is it? It's hard to hear you. Hi, this is Robin. Robin? Yes, how can I help you? Oh, is your phone upside down? It's like you're all muffled or something. No. Oh, okay. Well, this is Roy (laughs) from the corporate office. Okay. And um, I need to let you know, like, this is the cashier, right? Yeah, or I'm the assistant manager, yes. Oh, okay. Are you doing cashier work today? Um, I'm doing stacking and cashiering, yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, we thought that was you on the camera. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, uh, we're working on these automated robot things to replace all the cashiers. Uh-huh. And can you just, like, on this next transaction, can you go as fast as you possibly can? Because we're, timi- yeah. we're timing you against the robot. Oh, okay. The robot's <laughs> going to do cashiering at the exact same time. Okay. But can you just do, like, superhuman speed, like, you know, beep, 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 and... I will definitely give it a go. <laughs> okay, all right. Are you about to do it? Is there someone in line? Yeah, I'm cashing someone out right now. Okay, oh, well, that one was kind of slow. Can you do the next one super fast? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. No, no, we'll, we'll wait. We'll hold. I want to hear it beep real fast. Okay, hold and, on. And then second. talk real fast like the Micro Machines guy. Be like, okay. you know, your total is 734, but I can't talk real fast. Okay, I'm, I'm not the mic- one moment. Okay. Listen to her go. Oh, I should have set up a timer. I like how she put the phone right next to the beepy thing. Come on, lady, faster, faster. <laughs> Oh, she did not say that fast at all. It sucks. Her phone is so terrible.
you very much. Have a great day. She only had one item. <laughs> oh, what was all that beeping then? I heard a ton of beeping. Oh, yeah, that, that was the person I was cashing out. Oh, the person before? Yes, the one I was in the middle of <laughs> oh. whenever you first called. Oh, okay, all right. So you're going to do the next one super fast, like the Micro Machines guy? I'll try. Okay, are they there? They're there, but I'm not sure what she's getting. She doesn't have anything. Tell her to hurry up. She has an order to pick up. Okay, Tell she has an order to pick up, and I have nobody else in my line. Ah, darn it. Um, do you want the other cashier to pick up? Uh, yeah, if you could. Is she on a different okay. phone? That'd be great. Yes, hold on one moment. Jenny, can you, you pick up the phone, please? You, you need to get it like a dollar phone from the shelf and replace this phone with it because you're all muffled. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> okay, Jenny just picked up. Hello? Hey, Jenny. Hi. It's Roy from the corporate office. Yep. We're getting ready to replace all of you with uh, robots, you know, like robot cashiers. They're going to stand behind the counter and, and do things twice as fast as you. Excuse me? Um, this is Roy from the corporate office. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can. Okay. Um, just on this next transaction, are you getting ready to start a new transaction? I'm actually handing somebody out his cash now. Okay, like on the okay, next... Okay, now I'm going to start a new one. Okay, wait, 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 wait. On the next one, you need to go as fast as you possibly can. Just, like, make it beep super fast and talk really fast because we're timing you against a robot. We've got a robot here in the room. He's doing... He's going to be uh, mimicking your moves. We're watching on the security camera. Okay, um, could you give me a minute, though, because she's, like, maybe a couple seconds, she's got, like, a ton of Tupperware things. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll start the clock as soon as, uh, as soon as you start. Like, like you, you say, ready, set, go, and, and we'll, we'll start the timer. Okay, ready, set, go. All right, here goes. Three, four, five. Don't blow this. right there's 16 there talk faster okay. and okay your total today ma'am is going to be twenty dollars and 83 cents please tell the hurry be, be like hurry hurry give me the card put it in her card is in. We're just waiting on the computer now. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is getting really tense. Like, like uh, it's a it's a close one. You're almost yeah, in a minute. It, it's just we're just waiting on the computer. Yeah, you need to tell those customers to hurry up. What is the code of the day? No, no, not right now. Come on, we're in the middle of a transaction. Hurry up. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We don't have time for this. Okay. Thank you, and have a great day, ma'am. Oh, man. So you did a minute and 10 seconds. Not from our company. Um, um, we need to know the quote of the day. Okay, well, I'm just letting you know you did a minute and 10 seconds. And the robot was like twice as fast as you. You, you are not long for this company. <laughs> do you have the quote of the day, sir? I do. Um, I've got it right here. Go ahead and tell me what it is, and I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. He said, let him know what it is, and he'll let us know if we're ready. I'm what? Did she say I'm dead? I'm dad? What did she say? Oh, I'm bad. Man, she figured it out. Having a great day at Dollar Tree. This is Darren. How can I help you? Hey, Darren. Uh, this is Larry. I'm the security guy in your store today. Okay. I'm, I'm having kind of a problem here. Like, like they've told you about us, right? Nope. Oh, they, they've got us, like, hanging out in your stores under this, um, it's basically like the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter, but, you know, it's done with technology. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm in your store right now, but, stupid me, I, I put the thing on inside out, and now I can't see anything. Like, do you see me in there somewhere? Can you help me get this off of my head? Um, I'm thinking that this is not a legit call. Why? Because... They would have told us if there were something like this in the store. No, no, it's, it's to watch everyone. It's to watch the cashiers. It's to watch, you know, the customers. It, it, I'm just like a security guy, but it's like a security camera. You don't know it's there watching you, really. It's, it's practically invisible. It's way up there in the ceiling. 
It's just yeah. a new thing they're trying. It's an invisibility uh, technology thing. Yeah, I'm pretty so, sure again that they would have told us as a store manager if this okay. was going to be on. But anyway, thing. can you go? Can you find me? Because I'm sure that on the other side of the cloak, it's like brown with these little sensors sticking out, and I can't see anything because it's everything's invisible to me. Well, if you I'm, can't see anything, how am I supposed to see anything? I'm, well, no, no, because I put it on inside out. You can see. But I put it on inside out, so I can't see out of it. You should be able to see me. Like, can you just check the aisles? I, I should be walking around in, in, like, this weird blanket thing. But I, I'm, I'm kind of trapped in it. My feet are, like, on top of it. I've got it all zipped up. I just need help with the zipper. Well, there should be other people out there, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm banging on the shelf. Do you hear me? No, sure don't. This is not a legitimate call. Why do you say that? Because anything like this that occurs, corporate tells us. Do you what? have the code of the day? Why would we tell you that we're, we're sending people in there to watch you to make sure you don't steal from the register? Uh, we're, we're not <laughs> stupid. Like, we're not going to warn you. Uh, our corporate would. Well, yeah. Well, uh, look, I'm not from the corporate office. I'm, I'm just, I've, I've been hired to uh, wear this security, this invisibility cloak thing and, and hang what? out in your stores quietly and watch, observe. What's the, co what's the code of the day? I don't know. I'm not from corporate. You were authorized by corporate. You would have corporate uh, the code of the day. I'm an independent contractor. Either way, if you were authorized by corporate, you would have the code of the day. All right, what is it? I'll probably need it later. Can you tell me? No. Why not? Because I can't give that information out. Okay. Well, I wouldn't be able to either. If you know, like I'm not going to give it out. Why would you ask someone else for it? If someone else gives it out, then you have it. How do we know you're legit? Aha, he hung up because I won the argument. I'm clearly the right person in all of this. Thank you for calling Family Dollar. Oh, hey, Janelle. It's, uh, hey, th this is Larry. I'm the security guy in your store today. Okay. And have they told you about our program? Like, we, we, uh, they, they send us in there and we wear this, uh, this, uh, like, invisibility cloak type thing over our head and just hang out in there and watch everything. Okay, hold on a second. All right. Okay, who's calling now? Uh, this is Larry. I I'm one of the security guys. I, I hang out in your store under an invisibility cloak. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, just kind of watch everything in the store, make sure everything's A-OK. -okay. okay. And I put the cloak on inside out today, and I don't know where I'm at. Like, I can't see out of it because it's on backwards. What's backwards? My, my, okay, so it's this thing they make me wear while I'm in your store. Mm -hmm. And it makes me basically invisible. It uses technology or something. I don't understand it. Okay. B but have what you, are you looking? What? Have I seen it? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm inside your store right now. I'm just inside of this invisibility cloak. I've got it zipped up and I can't get it undone. And I can't see anything in here because it's invisible. So, uh, like, I'm, I'm banging up against things, like, on the shelves and stuff. Do you see me in the store somewhere? Like, I think it no. would be visible to you because it's inside out. Where in the store? I don't know because I, I'm, I've am i been walking around trying to get this undone. Like, usually I hang out by the counter and watch you and the other cashiers to make sure you're not stealing. No, you're... I'm uh, not sure where you're at. Thank you for calling, though. Well, can, can you check all the aisles? I want to get someone to walk around and flap their arms to find me. But no, I need to give up on the invisibility idea. That's so ridiculous. What the hell were you thinking, Miguel? Dollar Tree, can I help you? Hi there, it's Roy from the corporate office with Dollar Tree. Yes, hi. Hey, um, is this the cashier? Yes, this is Judy. Oh, hey, Judy. Uh, we're, we're just doing the cashier race today. Um, we're getting, like, do you have customers in there? Pardon? Do you have a customer in there? We're we're getting ready to do a cashier race. We're gonna we're gonna pit you against a cashier in Colorado, and we're gonna see who oh. finishes first. Okay, actually, we're just starting to get a few people in. Oh. I was putting stuff back that was returned or out of place. So. Okay, well, the the cashier in Colorado, her name is Sarah. She's standing by. Um, she just she's waiting for you to start. Oh, is, is okay. there someone there you can check out real quick? Uh.
You have to do it. Uh, yeah, right now I can, I guess. Okay, uh, tell me uh, when you're ready. We're watching them on the security cameras, but they're delayed, so you have to say ready, set, go, and that's when Sarah will start. Do I hang my phone up? Oh, no, no, stay on the phone. Like, if you can keep it up by your ear, that'd be great. Oh, well, I'll give you a try. That seems silly to me, but <laughs> all right. No, oh, it's, it's fine. Right. We do this every week. Get ready, week. go. All right, go, go, go. Go faster, faster, faster. Oh, man. Man, Sarah's in the lead. Sarah's beating you. younger than me. <laughs> oh, no, you're about the same age. We, we pair up people by age Oh. to make it fair. We've got a betting pool. Well, usually, usually I'm faster than this. It's hard to have the phone up to my ear and because mm -hmm. I grab two at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Nine twenty-one. Tell them to hurry. Tell the tell the customer to hurry up. You're in a race. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Faster. <laughs> Doing a credit card. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, Sarah's Sarah's about done. Sarah's almost done. You're gonna lose to Sarah, lady. What's your name again? <laughs> I am Judy. Oh man, Judy. Oh, Sarah just finished. You're the oh. you you lost, Judy. <laughs> Okay, sorry you, about that. You lost the race. Okay, is that it? Do you um, want to talk to Keith? Or? No, no. We're going to be docking your pay by $40, though. I can't hear you. We're going to be docking, we're going to be docking your pay by about $40 for losing. Oh. oh, really? Well, then I guess this will be my last day, won't it? <laughs> oh, no, no. Don't say that because we, we need you until we get the robots in there to replace you. Oh, okay. Well, I'll think about it, okay? What's your name? Uh, this is Roy from the corporate office. Okay, Roy. All right. Is there anything else? I've got people on. Wait. Um, no, I guess that's it. We're going we're gonna to pit the winner against... Uh, Sarah's going to be racing against someone in Texas next. Okay. Can tell her good luck. So you, you don't get to participate in this round. That's fine. Thank you. Too bad for you. Bye-bye. You too. Right. Bye. I had to do this for real. I had to turn this into an actual game show, get some sound effects, put two cashiers on the line, make them wait, like make the customers wait until we're both ready so we can synchronize them and, and see who wins, see who's the ultimate winner. That'd be great fun. Let's do that. Maybe do it at a place that doesn't ask me for the word of the day every other call. Dollar Tree, this is Jake. How can I help you? Hey, Jake. This is Roy from the corporate office with Dollar Tree. Yes. Uh, I'm like, are you the one that's cashiering right now? No, Reba is. Oh, Reba, that that must be the one because like she keeps looking at me. She keeps looking at the security camera. Can you tell her to stop looking at me real quick? I'm sorry. Like I'm watching your store through the security camera, and Reba keeps just looking at the camera and just like looking at me and giving me looks. Um. Can Can you just I like guess. real quick ask her to stop it? Yeah, I guess that's just a confusing question. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, no problem. So you're like looking at the security camera on the left of her? Yeah, yeah. She keeps looking up at it and giving me snake eyes and like scowling and stuff. Are, are, okay. you, are you by her? Can you ask her real quick? Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll listen. Wait one second. You guys on the phone from corporate, so stop looking at the camera. Yeah, are you looking up a lot? I'm really confused. Okay. Yeah, she uh she said the only time that she looked up was there was some kids looking up at the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I don't know. I didn't know that was She she keeps looking at me. Like all day she just keeps looking. She's like looking at me, just looking, like give me snake eyes. No, I'm just trying to watch, you know, just just keeping an eye on things, but Every time I look up at the monitor, she's looking at me, like giving me snake eyes. Okay, is, I mean, is that a problem? Uh, it's just a little off-putting and weird. Like, I don't know why she has to look at me like that. I didn't do anything to her. Yeah, this doesn't... I, I, I've been very apologetic if this sounds very rude, but I just, I've never had a call from corporate like this, especially not one that says that they've been watching my cashier all day, um, and the one that has a problem that with her looking up at the camera. I just didn't think that was an issue. Yeah, well, it's just like she's taunting me. You know, like people, they look up to the camera from time to time, but she's just doing it constantly, and she's like pointing to her eyes and then pointing at the camera. 
That does not sound correct. What store am I at? Uh, the one on D Boulevard. Okay, I just had to make sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know what store it is. It's, uh, it, I, I have the schedule right here. It shows Rita on the schedule. So I figured it was her. But, like, can you just, can you ask her one more time just to stop looking at me? Yeah, I already did. What was your name? Can, can you ask her one more time? Because she really... It seems like harassment if she like, already knows that she doesn't have to look up there Well, anymore. I mean, even, like, just a second ago, like, you looked away, and then she looked up and, like, flipped flipped me off? Well, I mean, now she knows that somebody's watching, so I would be... I would be timid about that, too. Yeah, but she can't be flipping off the camera. She is not flipping off the camera. No, she did. Like, when you looked away, you didn't see it, but when you looked away just for a second, she looked up at the camera and she flipped... She flipped me off. Can I get your name one more time? I'm sorry. I know sure. it's Roy. Yeah, Roy from the corporate office. And is that the only job title you're able to give out? No, well, I work here in the, in the security department. Okay. No, right, she, yeah, did, she did it again. She did it again. She just did it again. Just now? In yeah. front of camera? In front of customers? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell her? I'm, wa I'm watching her. She's not doing that. No, she did. Like, you just, you looked away for one second. You were writing something. And, and and she looked up and she flipped me off again. She like she did the thing where she like pretends to be uh, like scratching her face or whatever, but she did it with her middle finger. Let me just double check that because I can look at the cameras too here. That's okay. Very 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 surprising to me. Yeah. It's always something with Rita. How long does it take? Take for what? Uh, like you're going to look at the cameras right now? Yeah, it'd take me two seconds here. Okay. Can, can you see what she's doing while you're looking at the, the recording? Cause you won't I be mean, I can see what she's doing on the recording, yes. Well, I know, but you can't see what she's doing live because she just stuck her tongue out at me. I just don't know how she would even know that you were watching. Me, me either. Like, this is, usually isn't a problem, but she's just been looking at me. It's like she knows... Well, I'm now getting to the part where she would have, or whenever you said that she did, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I usually take medications for this kind of thing, and, and maybe, like, because I stopped taking it a few days ago, maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just seeing things. I would have to I, say that would be okay. This is probably the most confusing call I've ever gotten in my life at Dollar Tree, and I've been here four years. I've never had anybody call from corporate saying that they're watching my cashier. I've never had a cashier flip off the camera. I've never yeah. had a cashier do anything. I don't know why she, why she would do that. That's just weird. Like, like what's the point? I'm That's just, what I'm asking. I'm just doing my job, you know. Uh, what are you watching for, if I can ask? Oh, you know, just, just making sure nobody's pocketing any money around there. Okay. Got to keep an eye on Rita. That's not even her name. <laughs> I thought you said Rita. Okay. Reba? Yeah, uh, Re whatever. Same, uh, I'm pronouncing it with the American accent. It's different spelling, but okay. Um, do you need anything else from yeah, me? But you guys are practically Canadian. We're in California. Okay. Do you need anything else from me? Uh, can you just go to ask Rita one more time why she's doing it? No, because I just watched the camera the entire thing, and she did not do anything that you said that she did. I think she did, though. And, and I noticed you, like, you don't even have your socks pulled up. I don't have my what? Your socks pulled up. You're wearing, my sock? Yeah, your socks. They're, they're, like, down at your ankles, like you're pretending you're, like, some skater kid. Man, this is the most confusing call. Like, are you really from corporate? Of course. I wouldn't lie about that. Well, that's what I would think, but this is the weirdest line of questioning I've ever been through. Well, like, why do you have your socks down like that? What socks am I wearing? It's not even professional. I can't see because they're, they're far away, but I can tell that they're bunched up around the ankles. Yeah. I don't know who this guy is. Yeah, now she... Okay. Sorry. What's she saying? What's she saying? What's she doing? No, I'm going to hang up now, call my district manager, and figure out what's going on. Why are you going to do that? Thank you. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I call him out on his socks, and he just hangs right up. I got him there, didn't I? That's the point where he knew I was legit. Like, how could I know that if I wasn't really watching? 
I think I'm going to stop with all of this, though. Thank you, Miguel, for the two ideas that I used today of yours. Hey, Brad, this is Mike, a uh, new listener. Hey, uh, Mike. Your show, the Snowplow Show, is way better than Madhouse or the other yeah. one. Uh, yeah, take take that, Madhouse. Time. Way better. Oh, come on. Uh, I got a lot. love it. It's-, it's my friends, you guys. They're, they're not trying to be better than me. They're, they're different than me. Maybe the Snowplow Show is more your speed. I don't know. Personally, I like Madhouse and Party Time and Dwight the Janitor and Justin and Molecular Heckler. I just like prank callers. We're not trying to compete with each other. We're all awesome. God damn it. Really, Roy? Officer Tackleberry? Really? Yep. Really? Really. Roy, I did it. broke the rules, I know. Man. Yep. I don't know what to say. All right, bye, Roy. You know, the Officer Tackleberry thing, that happened uh, before my FBI raid thing that happened. So there's that, at least. At least I'm not currently impersonating the police department. But come on, what am I supposed to do? If they they don't hang up their phone properly, they get back on the phone, they dial a number, they think they're reaching the police department, how can I not say that I'm Officer Tackleberry and say a bunch of weird, crazy shit to them? It's not like they even had a good reason for calling the police. They're just calling to waste the police's time anyway. Hey, it's high school graduate. Hey, Um, high school graduate. I think if you're an undead monster from Dungeons & Dragons, you would be either a lich or a vampire. Probably a vampire. Okay. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, high school graduate. I'm sure it means something really nice. Thanks, high school graduate. I don't know a whole lot about Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Big Moist. Hey, Big Moist. I like how (laughs) that lady didn't even acknowledge how odd it was that you asked her to listen into the bathroom and tell if that guy was going pee or taking a shit. Oh, yeah. She just did it. She just walked right over there and did it. She's like, yeah, I'll put my ear up to the bathroom door and listen to if this guy is doing number one or number two. Why not? He actually listened in and told you what he was doing. That was like the most bizarre and odd thing, and and everybody just kind of let that go. It was kind of weird. But, uh, uh, also, were you ever planning on doing, since things have kind of cooled down with the FBI and you're no longer on the most list, are you going to do some uh, private investigator calls? Those are always my favorite, and they were really cool. Oh, okay, yeah. Say, say that I put a, a GPS tracker on the bottom of their car. I didn't stop doing those for legal reasons. I just, I don't know, you know, I did them. And now I want to do new things. The most thing I've settled down on is getting private information from companies by calling them up and being like, hey, give me private information because I say so. But yeah, I'll probably do the GPS thing eventually. Again, someday. Hola, it's William from Sacramento. I listen to your show every day. And it's my weed. Oh, well, you. It was a nice show. Hey, bye. Okay, thanks, William. I'm pretty sure he was calling from a payphone. Ah, uh, hey, Brad, it's Corman Guy, and of course I always have awesome things to say. I know And, you uh, yay, uh, some compliments to you. Um, the last two, three shows, I'm catching up on them, are absolutely awesome. Well, what There's were you expecting? moments, though. And uh, for the 500th the episode... Um, yeah, you wanted some ideas, and I'm really computer unsavvy, even though, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Yeah, what about shushing people? I really liked it when you shushed people. That was awesome, and you did good. When did Maybe I shush people? a little people? touch of that, you know, as a buffer in between, uh, uh, what, what do you call them, promo spots? Or, 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 or uh, drops? Um, I, I, I don't know that. I need to shush people, name. okay. Fuck this shit. Oh, I'm bored of this right. call. I'm gonna hang up. Goodbye. Bye, Corbin guy. I don't exactly remember shushing people. I know some people, like, they won't stop talking and I just start telling them to shut up. Maybe that's what he means. Hey, it's wasted. Hey, wasted. You know what makes me a fucking rage, Brad? Oh, what? All I right. think you're calling into the wrong show, Wasted Memory. You had a whole hotel full of fucking computer nerds and phone freaks and everything else. Mm-hmm. And they can't run a single line. They can't use a Skype machine. Yeah, they can't use a telephone idiots. machine. And it's a fucking... Ha- you gotta, come on. What What's going on? What's yeah, happening? I don't know. What, and then it was just... Uh, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, it just it makes me so fucking angry. I have deep respect for those guys, but... Me too. God, damn it, sometimes. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you know? I mean, I, I get it. Things don't always work, but... I think they just didn't bring the right equipment. Uh, all right, I'm, I feel I better think it's, now. I think it's uh, provided goodbye. by Hope or something. 
I'm not sure, but I think wasted memory is referring to when I was supposed to be on Radio Statler over the weekend and it just didn't work out. Like they tried to get me on the phone. They did get me on the phone a few times and I think they could hear me, but I couldn't hear anything they were saying. Like the audio just wasn't right. And I don't know what kind of setup they had. Maybe Hope just provides them with a, a setup for hobos. And like at one point they finally had me on and I could sort of hear them. And then I had to go like my neighbor needed me for something. So I had to leave for 20 minutes. And then when I got back 20 minutes later, it was just the same old problems again. So basically it was my fault. I took off for a few minutes and everything just went to shit. Hey, sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, you guys. This is a big, sorry, side pocket. Binger, 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 binger. From uh, Minnesota, the Twin Cities area. Hey um, there. I just want to let you know you're a uh, badass bitch. Whoa. Thanks. Um, and I was wondering if you would uh, be down to so, like, like call me a vampire and D and D babies someday. Um, if so, that'd be dope as fuck. Anyway, um, okay. suck a dick, right. bitch. Bye. Thanks. I'll totally have your baby. Sure, why not? Hello, Bri. This is Doctor Gonzo calling. Hello. I just want to compliment you on your shows recently. You seem to have the habit of sticking with terrible ideas right until the end. That's always fantastic. Yep. Just like today, right? Like today's show, I, that was gonna be a hobo sode. And then I was just enjoying myself, so I just kept going. I was just going to do like maybe two or three calls, maybe five tops. But nope, I just kept at it, and now I can just pass this off as a real show instead of a hobo sode. If you hated today's show, don't blame me. Blame Miguel. And also blame King Richard and Brown Magic and Kuraz and Gobi and Derek J. They're the ones at fault, not me. I just have one medical-related question for you. All right. How long is your penis in centimeters, please? Oh, I, thank you. If you can get back I to the secretary, or don't know centimeters. Or message and let me know. Thank you. Come on, I'm an American. What the fuck's a centimeter? We only use manly measurements around here, like yards and cups and feet. You know, stuff that makes perfect sense. I'm not gonna know what a centimeter is. Hey, Brad, it's Justin from Maryland. Hey, and, uh, Justin. I just listened to your dreams episode. And I couldn't believe nobody in the chat pointed this out. While you were, uh, maybe they did and you just didn't see it. While you were Probably. reading that. I have a hard time looking at the chat rooms when I'm doing shows. I'm sorry, chat rooms, that I can't pay attention to you. Story about Mama Erin and all that, that bedtime story towards the end of the show. And you said, well, she looks like some sort of bird, maybe a stork. No, I don't know what it is. She's a heron. Oh, I'm a heron. A heron is. A Look, I'm an American. I don't know centimeters and birds and stuff. I'm a high school dropout. Type of bird. I don't. I don't know so things. That's what she was. I don't know if you were just trying to pretend to be <laughs> stupid. Uh, I should have gone with that. I should have just been like, I know what a fucking heron is. I'm not a fucking idiot, but nope, I actually am. You were actually stupid, but yep, I am. she's a heron, which okay. is a type of bird. I'm a heron. Yeah. So there know. you go. Just had to point that out. Thanks. Okay, bye. Bye. You know, in my defense, they were like shitty drawings, like super shitty drawings in that story. And now I'm looking on Wikipedia. I'm trying to find a good defense, like, oh, maybe they're only found in India or something. <laughs> but nope, it looks like they're found everywhere except Antarctica. I learned something new today. Thanks, Justin. Hi, Brad. This is Dr. Tom Servo. Hey. I have a dear friend named Chris B. Hey, Chris He has an addiction to making love to vehicle sale pipes. Who doesn't? This has resulted in a very bad virus. It's a normal, manly it's thing to do. It's called the bacon virus. It turned his dick into a bacon. Into a bacon. Into a bacon. Hmm. The rusty tailpipe. We are starting a GoFundMe to, to repair his bacon dick. Okay, then. So, Dr. Tom. everybody keep him in your bacon prayers. All right, thanks Cactus. for the voicemail. Sorry to hear about your friend's condition. Hey, Brad, it's Princeton. So, uh, yeah, you, you know, you were saying on my last voicemail, I was asking why you kept moving around state to state. I never, I didn't know you lived in South Carolina. Is that right? You yep. live in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Yeah, you mentioned some other state too that I was like, what? Really? You lived out there too? Uh, yep. no, seriously, like, what, like, is there, like, you didn't pick a state at random, right? You oh, didn't yeah, it's completely random. put a map on there and just throw a dart, did ya? I remember me and Sylvia, my girlfriend, uh, for a short time in the 90s, we actually spun a bottle on a map 
trying to be like we're in the movies or something. And I think we settled on, was it Georgia or Seattle? One of those you know, two. I, I imagine it was probably themed after some 80s or 90s movie. By oh, the way, hey, look at that. Part. But anyway. Um, Read my mind. No, but, uh, I think we should, you know, since you're saying you want to get out of Oregon, I think we should try to decide for you or try to, you know, beg you to come to various states. Okay. And I was thinking, well, you know, strategically, Brad, if you're going to keep going on this prank call thing, which seems to be, you know, you're in it for the long haul, right? Yep. Well, strategically, <laughs> according to choice your own now. rules, you don't want to call within your own state, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I could just, like, call every state now as I'm traveling. Just call the states furthest away from me. You should, you should move to a state with the most chilled out people. I remember that episode a long time ago mm. called, like, Oregon's pretty chill. Potato Wagon, which was, like, the worst episode ever because no one... No one reacted to any of your jokes. I think it was North Dakota or South Dakota because I recognize some of the names in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, that would be I'm always good. trying I, South Carolina because I remember their crazy accents I live in there. South Dakota. I can, I can testify. I think that would be a good state. Okay, it's uh, been a minute and 30 now. Talk. Great idea, Crimson. This voicemail goes on for another 40 seconds. I gave him more time today than I usually do. So that's hey, that's me again. Sorry, I forgot to mention that I fixed my red Volvo. Um, the, the issue was actually that I was... Uh, I was tightening the screws while the engine was cold, but I should have been doing it when it was hot. Oh, stupid so, you. That's a silly mistake on all my right, part. Thanks. Well, it's cleared it up for anyone Red involved. Volvo person. Glad you got that all worked out. Brad, I have a stupid uh, suggestion for you. Try and call people from Westboro Baptist Church and okay. pretend that you are God. Thank all you. right. Because they're not used to prank calls. They don't get prank calls all the time, every day. Hey, Brad. It's nice to see murder. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've called. Hey there. But um, you, you were racking your brain to figure out what kind of bird. Uh, oh God. Mama here. Heron was. Here we go again. Did you ever think that maybe she was a heron? I'm stupid. Okay, I'm you know, stupid. That's a kind of bird. You're just racking your brain. Oh, she's a. I don't know. I'm a. I'm a man. A damn it. Orc. I, I'm not into birds. I'm into manly I'm things. She's a heron, since you know that's her name. Yeah. I know. Dummy hobo. I just, like, I don't know. It was a hard story anyway. to follow. Hi. It was a very broken English in that story. I just assumed it was more broken English. That's what it is. That's my excuse. I blame whoever wrote that story. That's the last time I'm reading you guys a, a bedtime story. Never again. I need to do another one of those shows again. Another one of those dream shows. Because that was a lot of fun. That has so much potential. We got to do that again. Going to do it again. I was sort of half planning to do a show last night since I only did one show last week, one regular snowplow show, but I got wrapped up in The Walking Dead. I hadn't seen the last eight, eight episodes yet of the most recent season, so instead of doing anything constructive at all, I sat on the couch and watched The Walking Dead. I watched six episodes. I'm going to watch the remaining two tonight. Go ahead and, and give spoilers if you want to. I don't care. I'll be done with it by the time you get around to doing that. So go ahead. It's not going to work. I've already seen it by this point. I'm probably going to finish watching it while I edit this show. So goodbye, everyone. That's the end of today's show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you, sponsors. King Richard, Brown, Magic, Kuraz, Gobi, Derek J. I like how that Dollar Tree lady said Kuraz's name twice, like two different ways, like she wasn't sure, just like I always do. Be sure to follow PLA's Twitter, twitter.com slash phone losers. We have a Facebook at facebook.com slash phone losers. Since I haven't finished the Mr. Biggs and Roger um, PLA show from yesterday, if you go to facebook.com slash phone losers, you can see the video version of that, but it's unedited. I'm going to try and get that done tonight, too. Hey, what do you guys think? Should I call that? Should I just, like, I, I still haven't really decided yet. I've just been calling it the Phone Losers of America show, because why not? I've never had a show called Phone Losers of America before. PLA Radio stood for something completely different. Or should I call it the PLA All Day show? What do you guys think? I need suggestions. I can't make decisions on my own. I don't even know what the fuck a Huron is or what a centimeter is. When I get the Mr. Big Show video posted, it's going to be on youtube.com slash phone losers of America. That's another thing you should be subscribed to. That's where I do live shows sometimes when I do prank calls. We've got a Facebook group where you should not submit prank call ideas. Miguel. That's located at facebook.com slash groups slash go away PLA. And there's a Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash phone losers. There's also a billion other things related to the phone losers you can find. It's in the show notes. It's at the bottom of every single time I do a show, it's in the show notes. A bunch of links to the Discord and 
and the Instagram and everything else. Go there. Join all the PLA communities. Bye, everyone. Corn Grain Crunch. The cereal you can eat for lunch is Corn Grain Crunch. Cereal you can eat for lunch. Now I'm here to tell you all about this brand new way cool, totally edible, magical cereal. Take one bite, you'll be flabbergasted. Your taste buds will get blasted. It's made with love. I mix every batch in my grandma's bathtub. It's fortified with flavors. Eat a serving, it's a tasty endeavor. Corn Grain Crunch. The cereal people eat for lunch is Corn Grain Crunch. Cereal people eat for lunch. I walk around my city with a plastic bag, picking out ingredients that I want to have. There's a security man in the store, but he's invisible.